Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this has worked. Um, my name is Miko Cleland. If you haven't met me before, I'm one of the genealogists at Find My Past, and I've been asked by a wonderful community to say hello and to talk about British genealogy for the next half an hour or so. Um, you may have noticed we're not in the office in this uh age of uh, isolation and uh, social distancing, um, I'm actually at home. Um, so I'm uh, tuning in. Uh, I'm not ill, but uh, everyone should be a little bit more careful these days. And uh, I'm here to answer as many questions as possible. I know we have a few already sitting waiting to be talked about. Uh, but I wanted to say before we get started, uh, for all of those of you watching that there are um, a few things um, we could be thinking about whilst uh, doing our family history uh, at the moment. I know many people are going to be indoors for some time uh, and it's always good and sensible to take precautions. Um, but um, family history is uh, a great thing for uh, online research and uh, not having to go to archives and libraries, especially when they're closed at the moment. Um, it does mean um, that uh, there are all these different resources that can be used while you're researching uh, from your own home and take advantage of them. Um, there are great things to look at and, and great ways to really break down brick walls or learn about how your ancestors may have lived. There are free historic courses in some places. Um, there's a, a good website called Future Learn. It's very good. Um, if your answers are from another place, uh, why not try uh, another good uh, website I use called Duolingo? And there's a, an app as well if you're interested. It's another free thing where you can learn languages. Uh, perhaps you can learn Welsh. Scots Gaelic has just been launched on there. Um, Irish. Uh, different ways to connect with your ancestors that might not involve going down and seeing people in person uh, that still mean that you can uh, perhaps uh, a little bit closer with your family history. Uh, hi, Patricia from Ashby de la Zouche. Um, I was in Leicester for some time uh, in my youth, my wayward youth, uh, so uh, I know it very well. A uh, wonderful part of the world. And um, yes, so the first questions that we've had, I'll try and answer those. Um, I know there was a question about suicides and someone looking for some more documentation. Uh, the uh, act of suicide was only, um, it was illegal up until the early 1960s. Uh, and so there may be court documents. Uh, there are uh, some known notable cases of people who committed suicide and then have been actually tried after death, uh, though they're much earlier, usually in the 16 and 1700s, uh, because it was a little bit more uh, realistic as we move later on. But uh, as we look at the 1800s and the early 1900s, uh, don't forget that any kind of unnatural death would be recommended for a coroner's inquest. And those records are usually held at local archives and they're with local courts. And so uh, you will probably find something like that there. They're not all preserved and they don't all survive and they do have a lot of privacy rules around them because they can be quite detailed. Uh, but take a look at your local archive catalog and see perhaps if you can find a coroner's report that may give you a little bit more light. And it might tell you, as you see, I see you're looking for where someone may be buried. More information might be included there about what happened uh, to your ancestor. Another question about uh, the uh, uh, Dr. Bernardo's and uh, records along there. Um, the uh, records of Dr. Bernardo's are vast and detailed, but understandably, again, uh, these are quite personal issues. Uh, they are held for those who need to see them. So if you're the closest living relative or you have the consent of the closest living relative of the person you're looking for, you can fill in a form and they'll give you what they have in their archive uh, from the distances you're talking about. Um, hopefully, um, they, they should be all right. And um, it sounds like you may be the closest relative. So take a look at their website um, and just fill in that form and they should be able to help you out. A lot of those records do survive and they are very, very helpful. It seems uh, lots of people saying hello. Hi, Audrey. Hi, Karen. Uh, hi, Dave. Uh, I know the, the Prime Minister will be on as well very shortly. Um, we kind of have a 24 hour news cycle at the moment. There's always something going on. So it's very difficult to choose when to do this. And uh, with 
people from around the world. It, this seemed to be just uh, a time that we could all maybe get together. Um, hopefully, um, of course, uh, you stick with us and uh, maybe catch up just afterwards on what may have be happening. Um, but uh, yes, we'll be here and we'll be doing many of these over the next a uh, few weeks, um, probably perhaps longer. Um, I encourage everyone to not just talk to other genealogists, get involved in our Find My Past forum, um, but perhaps discuss in person through the internet rather than having to meet someone. There are some wonderful tools like Skype, uh, Google Hangouts, something called Zoom. Um, they're all very, very good. Uh, you can then show your face and just be a bit more social, a bit friendly. Um, we can't perhaps get together and have a cup of tea or sit at a cafe, but we can do that virtually. And it still means that we're, we're not as alone as we may seem. So uh, it, the, uh, um, it, there isn't that much of a, a worry if we continue to sort of stick together and we can do these things together. Um, I see, hi Anya, uh, very nice to see you and uh, very nice to see everyone tuning in. It's all uh, great fun. And uh, so anyone have any questions about family history? Thank you, Chris, for, for the comments on the beard. It's uh, very cold up in Scotland, so uh, I've had to uh, grow something to, to warm me a little bit. Um, so I'm uh, seeing how that goes. And um, yes, uh, just waiting for maybe a question or two. In the meantime, um, great tips for looking at different records. Our record A to Z is the glossary of all our record sets, or A to Z if you're in America. But uh, this is a huge index of all the records on our site. Um, when you find something that may be of interest, type in Wills, type in Census, type in Essex, anything you can think of. It will show you what we have that may be uh, re related, uh, may be useful. Uh, and then each of these pages has a big description of what's in the record collection and what's in the record set, which means you don't have to be a records expert to get into those records. You can take a look and you can learn about what's there, uh, the context around those records, what may be missing, and that can really help you, especially perhaps if you type your name into the main search and you find something and you say, what are the British India Office baptismal records? You can find them in your... Um, own uh, record A to Z, and you can read a description about what those records are in more detail and learn about uh, perhaps where they come from or, or more about the different descriptions that may be included, or maybe even different codes. I know particularly uh, if you have any records in uh, the Merchant Navy, a lot of those have numeric codes all over, and those codes reflect um, different ports that your ancestors may have visited and may have been in. Uh, and of course, once you can translate those into places, they might tell you a little bit more about your family history. I see Fiona Winter has asked how best to search for someone female, 1948 to 1965, can't find her on a UK electoral roll. So um, if you're looking for them, um, if they're not in the electoral roll, I'm assuming because this will be the edited electoral roll because of privacy rules, um, then that means that they, they haven't opted in, uh, which people can do. Um, I would start by perhaps looking at property records, uh, rate books, uh, different kind of records of taxation, local records. Um, you're kind of just at that point of privacy um, kicking in. So the earlier side might be a little bit easier. Um, local archives will have some material and there will be some online, um, but it Many, much of it isn't digitized, so it may be a little harder. Um, if you could push that window back a little bit to the early 1930s, um, there's lots of material you can look at. So we have a huge collection of electoral registers, which is growing, um, and that from 1928 will include women. Uh, 1918, uh, it does include women, but later there are many more from 1928 when all women could vote. Um, and then uh, then there are also things like rate books and property taxes that we have as well on our website too for certain locations. Um, if you're looking for women in certain places like Scotland, uh, look for them by their maiden name as well as their married name because they didn't always use the married name. They often kept the maiden name during that time as well. Uh, Anya has got a number of family members who are involved with political parties that started 20th century. Where would I look for information on what they did and how they were involved? So different political parties function slightly differently. Um, I have seen uh, records of the Labour Party uh, from way back when, their first uh, organisation. Um, and those early records are available to be seen and they are 
uh, held in an archive uh, and they're accessible. Um, it would depend on the party. Uh, some parties, because there are private organizations um, and they're not sort of run by the government, uh, what they've done with their records can vary. Um, I think the Labour Party records are in Leeds, if I'm correct. I may be slightly wrong, but they're somewhere um, in an, another archive that's looking after those early records and, and they are accessible. And I think many of them have been um, scanned as well for the very, very early records. Um, you may find membership records. You may also find um, some details about um, different flyers, different leaflets, different things that they may have been using. They're often very well preserved. Some of those are even in the British Library. And then also, um, of course, don't forget those newspapers. Uh, my uh, great great grandfather was involved in politics back in the 1890s um, and so there are details of the meetings of these parties um, at those points um, he was involved in knocking on doors for um, a party in Scotland and so uh, I can then see that he was at these meetings and that he raised certain queries about how the candidate will be faring and this sort of thing so newspapers are all a very very useful um, resource indeed as well um, so, um, Kim Billy Thompson, uh, inquests in the early 1800s, fourth great grandmother may have murdered her husband. I can't find anything about his death. She was hanged a few years later for poisoning a boy. The, um, biggest thing to look at again is those newspapers. Anything like this sounds very, very, uh, scandalous. And so of course people would want to know about this in the newspaper. It would make news. Uh, take a look at our newspaper collection, which is huge and growing. So don't just look today, look once a month or once every two months and keep looking because there's so many new records being added and uh, that really, really does mount up quickly. You may find nothing one week and then the next week, exactly the right newspaper has been added that can really help you. Also, of course, a lot of these things, if they're particularly interesting, have been syndicated. Uh, an, an ancestor of mine um, was uh, a little scandalous in the same way that he uh, uh, had a, an altercation with his fiance um, and uh, tried to kill her and uh, then killed himself. And uh, so that, he was from Dumfries. Uh, I was uh, finding stories about that, not only in the Dumfries newspaper, which was digitized, but also in Norwich, also in Lincoln, also in Leicester, in all these places, because if the story was interesting enough, it was syndicated. They needed to fill these uh, spaces in their newspaper, and those newspapers were so much bigger back then as well, weren't they? So they needed lots of different content. So don't limit yourself to just the local paper. Try and look in all these different newspapers as well. Okay, so we have uh, another one from Anne Kirk. A uh, 10 year brick wall, a second great grandfather, John Murphy. Now, with a name like that, that's going to be a start. Let's have a look. Um, born about 1829. Uh, how do you get through this brick wall? He married an Anne Oliver in 1854 in Liverpool. Uh, just such a common name. Uh, father is called John, but Murphy is a nightmare. Yes, exactly. So use every single part of a record. Uh, no part of a record is uh, not useful. Everything you can think of, everything you can see. Um, if you're looking in Liverpool, we've got this marriage, 1854. Um, depending on his occupation, we might find him then again, electoral registers, rate books, different kind of things that may show us when he arrived in Liverpool. If we can get to this point, we can use census as well. Start with 1851 census, 1841. Try and work out these windows of where these people are and where they've come from. And don't forget as well, if you use later censuses, they can be more detailed. So although you've got Scotland, if you can find him later on with Anne, which gives you a little bit more of a help, you've got John Murphy and Anne Murphy, um, and perhaps start looking at some of the births, etc. cetera, um, then and we have a huge collection of records from Liverpool that cover uh, not just uh, the established church, but the Catholic church as well. With a name like Murphy, it sounds like he may perhaps have been of Irish extraction. And so that's another good place to look. Uh, then um, you can hopefully, one of those later senses, find a place in Scotland that he may have come from. And that really narrows things down. Every single thing you can do, if you lay out someone's life and you uh, start to just use every single record set, just ask yourself which records are in existence at this point. So again, electoral registers are um, a little bit uh, later as they become more useful, censuses every 10 years, all these other different records, and then try and find as many of them as you can. And each one might give you that little bit more information. And hopefully the little drip, 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 of these different little extra pieces will give you something that will 
help push you a little bit further forwards. Um, James McLean, does anyone know where, or is there a link for the Cooperative Society history? I'm looking to see if I can find my mum's aunt. She worked in the haberdashery department of the co-op in Widnes back in the 30s and 40s. Um, it's, it would just depend. Um, cooperative societies do have records. Um, they, they, I think there is a Cooperative Society archive as well. Although there are many different kinds of cooperative societies, so there's the big one, um, but there are also different kind of other establishments and worked in a similar way. Uh, so it would depend. Again, there are private organizations, so um, their records are held separately. But I do think they do have a fair amount. So I would perhaps, first of all, go to their own website and see if there's an archive or anything like that that may be there um, and start with that. Um, there's also a chance, of course, that those records may be deposited in the local archive because local archives also have um, business records that have been deposited with them. There's no obligation to do that, um, but um, many people did um, when their company may have closed or anything like that, then um, they uh, would have deposited things there. Um, and Chris Lang's made a very important point as well, said uh, a lot of these archives and libraries that I might be mentioning, they're, they're closed at the moment because of the situation. Um, so take a look at their catalogues, go online um, and see how things are, see what's there and make a list of the different records that you might want when things open up again, uh, because they will open up again. Um, we don't know when just yet, but uh, we're all waiting. And then in the meantime, there's plenty of stuff online that we can do as well. Um, let's take a look at some of these other questions while we're going. Um, this is uh, a great, uh, Pat's recommended the National Museum of Democracy in Manchester. Um, I know of that museum, it's got lots of different bits of information. Um, and uh, there we go, at Fife Family History Society, the Fife Co-op Archive is in Dunfermline, Carnegie. Uh, so that's uh, one good resource. Um, they are held in very different places, so uh, it's good to really get under the skin of where you're looking. Um, I found uh, quite often things can be in surprising places, but uh, if you just keep looking, then that, that will really uh, get what you need. Um, okay, so let's have a look. Christine Pearson, my four times great grandfather, John Ray appears on the baptism records for 1816 to 1837. He's not on any censuses. Uh, his wife is of independent means in 1851. She's remarried as she's changed her name to Murray and living with her son, but no husband in sight. By 1861 census, she's back to the surname Ray. When she surname dies in 1866, she's back to Ray. Any ideas where I can find husband John? So it would depend a little bit on where you're looking. Um, some earlier censuses do survive. There are earlier records. Um, if uh, so, if I'm just trying to work out, I'm just reading this again. Um, his wife is an independent means. So, if he was baptized from 1816 to 1837, I think I'm not sure if you mean that he's baptized or if he's listed as a father. Um, if he's not in any census. Um, he he may be elsewhere. Um, I would take a look nationally first of all and see how many John Rays there are, um, and uh, see you know try and start to rule all of those in or out. And the same with death records, burial records, um, civil uh, records of birth, marriage, and death. At this point, they're not entirely a hundred percent comprehensive. Um, because that came a little bit later in the 1870s when the obligation to register these events uh, moved from the registrar to the actual person involved. But they are very, very good to take a look. So take a look there as well and see how many of these John Rays uh, are dying at uh, any sort of point. And then start to try and build other trees, start to find these John Rays in other censuses. And maybe you might have to build a profile for 10 or 11 people, but you'll be able to rule them in or out very easily. And then you might end up with maybe two or three or maybe even one that you need to investigate a little bit more. And that uh, might be something that you can then take a look at, especially uh, perhaps if um, you can't find them on a census or in a, in a time when you um, know that they may be um, with their ancestor, uh, with their, their wife there. Um, that would be a good one. Uh, what would you suggest to find Welsh records before 1800s? Um, parish records are great. They start in the 1530s and we have a, a huge collection of those. I think we're the only source of those Welsh parish records. Um, and we've added uh, many more and made many improvements to them over the past uh, month or so for St. David's Day. Uh, so they are a great start. 
um, as well. Um, if you're saying before 1800, it's a little bit later, but it's a really good place to look, um, as well as obviously newspapers. They are still around there at that sort of point. Um, the Welsh uh, National Library has a great website that uses tithe maps, and they're from about 1832. Uh, but they give you maps and details of people who own property and rent property um, at these different locations all over Wales, uh, particularly farmers and things like that. Um, so you may find the same family there and that might give you a little bit more information. Um, so that can be really useful. Um, I'm loving seeing everyone else help each other as well in this uh, discussion. It's great fun when we all come together, um, I think, as well as having um, all these people um asking me questions the fact that you're all asking each other questions is great on our find my past forum um there are many chances for everyone to ask more questions and help each other um i wouldn't be surprised if uh, people perhaps set up their own little uh gatherings using that uh, to talk about family history and uh, very different things uh, they could be doing i see nicola jennings how on earth could i find the identity of someone who got married in guernsey under an assumed name he then committed suicide by drowning and his body was washed up in england his body was somehow identified and his father claimed him um but i can find no record of the body being found in the newspapers all i know is that his father was a clergyman that's um that's a big one um i would perhaps start with the clergy um, if you find records of his father, uh, there are some good um, uh, records of those who uh, were in the clergy. Uh, if it's Church of Scotland, there's something called the Fasti uh, Ecclesiastica, uh, something Scotani. <laughs> My Latin is rough. Um, but it's a big book of those people who were the Church of Scotland. There's a good website for clergy of the Church of England. And they often give you family details as well. And those details of family um can help you um because they may tell you about uh anything that isn't known to you that may be part of uh the their sort of records and knowledge um if you married under assumed name um i'm not sure if you've got that record already or no um that might be slightly harder um there are some good records in guernsey although they're not really online um and of course if you commit suicide by drowning his body was identified um possibly I would take a look again at coroner's inquests and things like that um, if someone had drowned. Um, there are also um, deaths at sea. Uh, there's registers of those, government civil registers. Take a look at those as well um, because he may be recorded in there if he'd washed up ashore too. Um, uh, Rosie Murrell, uh, hi there, Rosie. You have a, a missing great-great-aunt, birth baptism in one sense before she disappears entirely. If she died as an unknown child, are there records that might show her? Um, I know there are many unknowns listed as Westminster burials. Uh, would others have similar, either online or otherwise? Yes, they would. Um, every uh, child that's buried, um, perhaps it's been paid for by the parish um, in Scotland and other places. They have lists of those that have been funded by the parish, those burials. But, um, of course, unknown children, if you look at early parish records or even unknown people because sometimes you will find and it's one of those things where you always think this is someone's ancestor that will never really be understood or or known um one particular one i was looking at in a parish i was seeing it was in the uh, late 1700s it said uh, uh, a wandering traveler not of this parish um age 70s and that was it so they didn't really know how old he was they didn't know his name and he was buried in this parish so um now of course uh, he may be one of our missing ancestors. So it does happen, um, and that makes it very, very difficult to find things. Um, but yes, if you can find unknown detail, um, that will, um, uh, it, it's a possible, it's a plausible, it could be them, but it makes it a little bit harder. Um, try and look at other records and details, and maybe they might be able to help you. And if it's been paid for by the parish, there may be some details in parish chest records as well um, of the ingoings and outgoings and the outgoings for payment. Uh, may give you a little bit more detail about these unknown people. Uh, Amanda Reed, I couldn't find anything in the newspapers about my ancestor who was hanged in 1795 for stealing from an envelope. I thought it was thought he was part of a gang who'd been stealing from the post office. I wanted to know more about his involvement, how he became a member. So um, newspapers in this sort of period um, were relatively um, 
uh, there were there were very few of them um, compared to the late 1800s when there was a big explosion of newspapers uh, because of course more people could read uh, they were cheaper and the tax that was involved was removed uh, so um, there are some and there are some online and we've got a chunk but um, not as many as we could find um, and there are more on the way um, it sounds very, very uh, important. So I would look at court records as well, because court records will have details. Newspapers will give you the the source, you know, the uh, the exciting he said, she said detail. But court records, particularly for someone who was hanged, uh, would be um, uh, in existence. We've got a big uh, record set of everyone who's been executed in Britain. Uh, start with that. Look at court records from our uh, court crime and punishment collection um absolutely fantastic uh, set uh, really big from the national archives uh, covering lots and lots of different records if he was hanged i'm sure that you'll find details of that but remember that this is a long process so when you're looking at criminal records don't just find the court calendar look for then um, details of the judge's report, look for details of the appeal, look for prison records if they went to prison. Uh, perhaps they were um, stored in a hulk, uh, which is the uh, floating ships that were usually on the Thames that were people kept in as prisons when the prisons were full before people went abroad to um, different places. And then there are other wonderful records like a Fife calendar of convicts um, from the Fife Family History Society, very good suggestion. Um, and uh, there's a, a wonderful said a collection of Scottish uh, crime and punishment collections too. Um, and uh, they can really give you lots and lots of extra detail. Um, I know we're, we've got two minutes left as we're running through. So I'm gonna try and uh, see if I've missed any questions that we can think of. I know everyone's giving some wonderful, wonderful suggestions. Uh, Sylvia Valentine said there's a cooperative heritage archive you can visit. Uh, Chris Lang giving all those useful research guides at National Archives website. Really, really great stuff. Um, really, really helpful. Um, I've used those as a starting point when I've started to look at something that I've uh, you know, never researched before because no one can know everything and, and there's no shame in saying I don't really know anything about that um, someone asked me about French research a while ago and I had to start from scratch and really sort of learn how it works before even touching it um, and that's really important um, because of course if you dive in without uh, really knowing and try and apply things that you know from somewhere else um, to that then you may find that they have very different rules and very different uh, uh, understandings of how things work and you might um, assume the wrong thing so always try and find these research guides and help um, come here ask us um, I know there'll be some wonderful Irish experts talking about Irish records in the future people talking about newspapers people talking about how to get started all these things are all available um, and and they can really help and uh, in this time when everyone said maybe indoors and may uh, be unable to go out uh, what better way to come together than um, than coming here and uh, taking a look at uh, our own family history, maybe helping someone else or getting some help and trying to break through some brick walls together. Um, I know we're, we're kind of at the end of our half an hour then. Um, it's been wonderful to see you all or at least virtually see you all and read you all. Um, thanks for coming around to my house. It's amazing I can fit you all in. Uh, but um, I'd, I'd love to talk to you again sometime. Uh, do join the Find My Pass forum and do talk as much as you can amongst yourselves and, uh, and do um, keep on uh, with your family history and, and keep enjoying yourselves. Um, keep helping each other in this time and um, hopefully it won't last too long. We'll be back out of archives uh, very soon. But uh, in the meantime, uh, the discoveries don't have to stop and uh, hopefully we'll be able to help you even through that period. So uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, I really hope to see you again soon and uh, we'll have to do it again. So uh, thanks very much, and uh, maybe I'll see you on the Find My Pass forum. Thanks a lot. Take care.